Hi all, welcome to another video of NS Pharma. Today we will see some important multiple choice questions from the pharmacology. Chapter Sulfonamides, Quadrimoxazole and Quinolones. Sulfonamides, Quadrimoxazole and Quinolones. From this chapter we will see the important multiple choice questions and some important points also. If you are watching this video on my channel in the first time then please subscribe the channel first of all and also press the bell button. Now we will move to the first question. Indicate the sulfonamide whose sodium salt yields a nearly neutral solution which is suitable for topical use in the eye. The question was it is a sulfonamide drug whose sodium salt yield a neutral solution which can be used in the eye for the topical use of in eye. Options are sulfadiazine, sulfacetamide, sulfadoxin, sulfamoxazole. The correct answer for this question is option B sulfacetamide. Sulfacetamide sodium is used in uh, as a for the topical use in the eye. Now we move to the next question, question number 2. The following is true of sulfonamide except the following is true of sulfonamide except option A they are more likely to produce crystallurea in alkaline urine in which they are less soluble. They are less soluble. Option B they are primarily metabolized by acetylation. Option C, they may exert bacterial, bactericidal action in the urinary tract. Option D, used alone, they have become therapeutically unreliable for serious infection. The correct answer for this question that is, which is not true about the sulfonamide is option A. They are more likely to produce crystallurea. Up to this one, it is okay. They will cause sulfonamide will cause crystallurea in alkaline urine. That is wrong. Alkalinity, alkalinization of urine will decrease the crystallurea. In which they are less soluble. No, in alkaline urine, this precipitate will be more soluble. More soluble. So crystal chance of crystal urea will be less in case of alkaline urine. So here the correct answer for this question is option A. Option, I mean question 3. Select the sulfonamide drug which is active against pseudomonas and is used for, by the topical application. It is used as topical application for prophylaxis of infection in case of burn cases. Burn cases. Option A. Sulfadiazin. Option B. Silver sulfadiazin. Option C. Sulfadoxin. Option D. Sulfamethoxazole. The correct answer for this question. As we know this, silver sulfadiazin is especially useful in case of burn therapy. Now the fourth question. Trimethoprim. Trimethoprim inhibits the bacteria without affecting mammalian cell because trimethoprim actually inhibits a dihydrofolate reduct reductase. But in case of bacteria, it inhibits. Why it is not inhibiting in case of mammalian cell? But that was the question. Option A, it does not penetrate mammalian cell. Option B, it has high affinity for bacteria but low affinity for mammalian dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. Option C, it inhibits bacterial folate synthesis as well as the hydrofolate reductase enzyme. Option D, all of the above. The correct answer for this question is option B. That is, trimethoprim has got high affinity for bacterial dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. That's why it inhibits bacterial dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. And it has low affinity for mammalian dihydrofolate reductase. That's why it, it is not inhibiting mammalian cell. Here you can see folate synthetase. Folate synthetase synthase inhibitor is sulfonamide. It's a sulfonamide is the example for folate synthetase inhibitor. Option question 5. Indicate the enzymes inhibited by fluoroquinolones. Fluoroquinolones inhibit, indicate the enzyme 
which is inhibited by fluoroquinolones. Option A, top isomerase 4. Option B, top isomerase 2, both A and B, DNA gyrase. This one we discussed in the previous uh, video that's uh, general consideration uh, regarding this antimicrobial agent in that we discuss the classification of the antibiotic according to the mechanism of mechanism of action in that we dis we discussed it this one dna guy fluoroquinolone inhibit dna gyrase the correct answer for this question is DNA gyrase. Example for fluoroquinolones are ciprofloxacin, catifloxacin, moxifloxacin, like that. All will end with fluxacin. Now the sixth question. Select the antimicrobial drug which is used orally only. It is usually orally only for urinary tract infection UTI or for bacteria, bacterial diarrhea. Option A non lexic acid option b acetromycin bacambicidin perfluxacin the correct answer for this question is non lexic acid non lexic acid it's a fluoroquinolone also it's a quinolone derivative it's a quinolone it's coming under quinolone class okay <coughs> Question number 7. Nalexic acid is primarily active against cocaine, bacille, gram-positive bacteria, gram-negative bacteria. The correct answer for this question is gram-negative bacteria. That's why it is mainly used in urinary tract infection. Now the eighth question. A single dose of the following drug can cure most cases of uncomplicated gonorrhea. A single dose of oral dose of following drug can cure most cases of uncomplicated gonorrhea. Options are ciprofloxacin, cotrimoxazole, sap, spectinomycin, doxycycline. The correct answer for this question is ciprofloxacin. Now we will move to the next question, question number 9. Which fluoroquinolone has enhanced the activity against gram positive bacteria and anaerobe? which fluoroquinolones have has enhanced the activity against gram positive bacteria and anaerobe Ex, uh, options are perfluxacin ciprofloxacin sparfloxacin norfloxacin options are perfluxacin ciprofloxacin sparfloxacin norfloxacin the correct answer for this question that is fluoroquinolone has enhanced the activity against gram positive bacteria and anaerobes sparfloxacin question number 10 currently the drug of choice doc for a embryonic treatment of typhoid fever for the typhoid fever options are Chloramphenicol, quadrimoxazole, ciprofloxacin, ambicillin. The correct answer for this one is ciprofloxacin. We will discuss some important points after the MCQ. Now I just read in the MCQ and their answers. Now 11th question, the following drug may cure typhoid fever. The following drug may, be, may cure typhoid fever. Here is we discuss a drug of choice for a typhoid fever, ciprofloxacin. Here it's saying that the following drug may cure typhoid fever but does not prevent the development of carrier state. It does not prevent development of carrier state. Options are ciprofloxacin, cotrimoxazole, chloramphenicol, ceftriaxone. The correct answer for this question is option C, chloramphenicol. So, in case of ciprofloxacin, it can prevent the, it can prevent development of carrier state also. But in the case of chloramphenicol, it does not prevent development of carrier state. Now, the last question of this video. In the treatment of typhoid fever, ciprofloxacin has the following advantage. Option A, it is effective in nearly all classes. Option B, early abatement of fever and other symptoms. Option C, development of carrier street is unlikely. D, all of the above. The correct answer for this question is all of the above. It can have the advantages like it is effective in nearly all cases. Development of carrier street is unlikely. It does not it, uh, uh, inhibit means uh, it does not pre it is prevent it prevent uh, development of carrier street and it also uh, helpful in the early abatement of fever and other symptoms. These are the important multiple choice questions from this chapter. Now we will see the uh, important points regarding this chapter. 
The first one is the classification. Classification of sulfonamides. Sulfonamides are classified into four types. One is short acting. Short acting. The character, uh, I mean, example is sulfadiazine. Sulfadiazine is example short acting. The second one is intermediate acting. Intermediate action acting. Example for this one is sulfamethoxazole as in the quadrimoxazole. Sulfamethoxazole is the example for intermediate. Now the third one long acting. Short, intermediate, long acting. Long acting examples are example is sulfadoxine. Sulfadoxine. Now the fourth option, fourth category is special purpose sulfonamide. They have special uses. Examples are sulfacetamide sodium that we discussed in the use for the solution for the topical use in the eye. One is sulfacetamide sodium, another one maffinite, then silver sulfadiazine, sulfasalazine. Silver sulfadiazine also we discussed and it's used in the burn therapy. These are the classification of sulfonamides. This is one of the important points. Next one is the mechanism of action. As we know that in the bacteria, PABA is PABA is para amino benzoic acid. Para PABA is converted into dihydrofolic acid first of all then it is converted into tetrahydrofolic acid tetrahydrofolic acid tetrahydrofolic acid PABA is converted into dihydrofolic acid by folate synthase folate synthase enzyme name is folate synthase dihydrofolic acid is converted into tetrahydrofolic acid by Dihydrofolate reductase. Dihydrofolate reductase. Okay. So this is the main step of the process. Sulfonamide will act here. It will inhibit this step. Sulfonamide will inhibit in this step. It will inhibit the folate in the days so that PABA is not converted into dihydrofolic acid. Now the second step, this one, this is inhibited by uh, trimethoprim trimethoprim Trimet trimethoprim inhibit this one that is dihydrofolate reductase so this is the mechanism action another one is quadrimoxazole quadrimoxazole is using in the combination of uh, sulfamethoxazole quadrimoxazole is quadrimoxazole is is a combination of sulfamethoxazole here quadrimoxazole here is sulfamethoxazole oxazole you can see oxazole trim trim for represent trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole here quadrimoxazole oxazole represents sulfamethoxazole quadrimoxazole first trim represent trimethoprim that is combination of trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole is the Quadrimoxazole in the ratio 1 is to 5, that is trimethoprin 1, sulfamethoxazole 5, or sulfamethoxazole is to trimethoprin in the ratio 5 is to 1. So, this is the another important point regarding this chapter. Okay, hope you understood this uh, chapter very well. And uh, these are important multiple choice questions. If you like this video, please. Uh, Share with you, share with your pharmacy friends, and also uh, press the bell button for the for getting notification regarding the new videos whenever I upload. Mm, coming videos, we will see the another chapters like uh, beta lactam antibiotics. This is also important chapter. Then uh, amino glycosides, macrolides. I will I will try to complete all the chapters in the pharmaco pharmacology also. Hope this uh, chapters and also this discussion will definitely will help you for the coming examination. Okay, thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Best of luck.